Wamaru is a living memorial to our country's great war sacrifice. The oak trees that line the entrance to the town and are dotted far out into the hinterland of the Waitaki district were planted in 1919, one for each of the 300 men who made the supreme sacrifice. The Great War ravaged this largely rural community, but the spirit of remembrance and respect for those who served is alive to this day. That spirit is tangible, deeply embedded, and a cornerstone of the character of this unique and proud place. Over 700 of those who served in the Great War were students or alumni of Waitaki Boys High School. The Hall of Memories commemorates them. It's been the focal point of school life for generations and is an ongoing reminder of the concepts of valour, honour and sacrifice. Brave young men from a peaceful place, drawn into a conflict far away, many lost their lives. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. We remember. We remember. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. I was 11th reinforcements, first lot. That was when I was in Timaru. Uh, 22, I suppose. <laughs> he was a good looking guy in those days, wasn't he? <laughs> and that's Bill. Well, that one's brother in law, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 I so carried him so out on me back. So on about the 100 yeah. yards. Whereabouts was that, so on? That was in Italy. In uh, Italy. We were the reinforcements for uh, Casino and um, well, well we left here and I think it was 2nd of January we got on the boat and uh, I think it was about May by the time we joined up with the, got into the division. I was back, I was in the 23rd then and uh, they come out of the line, they had been in uh, up on the mountain sort of almost round the back of Casino and they came out and they were out for a fortnight and then went in again. The other companies would be, go in and take over their places. That was a hell of a battle. Yeah, yeah, but I missed all that. But it, it was, we were in uh, Egypt and Italy while that was on. Mm. We, were, we were in, uh, in Bari in Italy when the um, bombing was done. You know, they bombed the uh, casino. So it was a hill, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was a um, big uh, monastery, monastery on the top. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and they flattened that out. But there was all tunnels underneath, so the Germans just went down into the tunnels. They still had uh, the view over them all. So that was half the battle, really. Is that one of the last pockets of German resistance in Italy, was it? The biggest one, the biggest last one, yeah. Oh, there was oh, the one at uh, Florence was the next biggest one we were at. I missed some of that. I went out with malaria for a fortnight. Wow. We uh, advanced forward to uh, a house. We always used to go to houses in Italy and they would work like a fort, you know and uh, there'd be a, perhaps a whole platoon in the house. That's 30 men. Uh, and, and it was like a fort. You, sometimes you'd have trenches around the outside and so forth, and go out at night to watch. We were there for, oh, I suppose, 10 days, might be a fortnight <coughs> in this house. And then the uh, uh, Americans took over from us and they attacked across the river. And when the, uh, the New, New Zealanders were the first across the bridge into Florence, but they had to come out again because the Yanks wanted to be the first. So what happens, all the Yanks come up, la flags flying and tanks waving flags and all the rest of it, and men m marching behind them over the bridge. 
there was a big row about uh, the 13th. Uh, we were on the boat for about two days, up in the three days in Wellington there. We were all marched up to, up the street, you see. And I thought it was through, all seemed to be organised. And then we all finished up outside Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and <laughs> then the old, uh, old Peter Fraser. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pr crawling around under the underneath all the hammocks, you know, and said, oh, this isn't good enough for our boys. He said, well, and he took us, we volunteered to go in this outfit, and then they, they were the ones that took off. Yeah. Yeah. So I, we had three, four months in Trent from getting bashed around the program. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
Thank you very much, Sam. Next, we've got the laying of the wreaths. I'll be doing one first on behalf of the, uh, the, the people of the Waitaki districts. But I'll ask those who are on the list for, to um, lay wreaths to also come forward in the order um, just to line up. Waitaki District RSA, Waitaki District RSA Women's Section, Waitaki District Executive and Members, the Wrens and ATC Cadets. You can line up and I'll call the others as we go through. In the Waitaki District RSA Women's Section. Take your district executive and members. The Rens, the Royal Auxiliary Navy. The ATC Cadets. If I could ask the, uh, the others to come forward, Southeast Asia, New Zealand Army, New Zealand Air Force, New Zealand Navy, New Zealand uh, Merchant Navy. Can do it together? Okay. And I was just going to show Tony how it's done. say a joke about them still having their cup of tea, but I won't. Um, New Zealand Navy. Navy. 
representatives of St. John, New Zealand Police, New Zealand Fire and Port Police. Start with St John. New Zealand Police, represented by ATC. New Zealand Fire. So first of all, we're presenting the Rhodesian complex. Could the representatives from various schools come forward, please? And also the Scouts, Sea Scouts and Guides in New Zealand, uh, sorry, the St John Cadets, if they have a separate route. So first of all, St Kevin's College. Waitaki Girls High School and Waitaki Boys High School. <laughs> Columbus Scouts and Sea Scouts. John Cadets. Before I ask Father Wayne to lay his wreath on behalf of chaplains, are, are there any others that uh, have breathed or, or want to leave hobbies there now. Uh, the Remembrance Army. Thank you, Barry. Father Wayne is going to be reading a scripture and saying a prayer, but uh, before he does that, he'll be laying a wreath on behalf of the chaplain service.
I've been asked to read the sacred scripture. Probably it's because I'm a priest or a minister and it's their job. But reading sacred scripture really is meaningless unless it is put into action. We've all got our warts and scratches, but we must try to action in what we say and what we do. And in my reflection of this day, I thought what a great shame it is, a real great shame, and with deep sadness, that we're in the 21st century and we're still, as humanity is, still warmongering. Countries and people making millions out of it. A Gene Roddenberg once said, the strength of a civilization is not measured, never measured by its ability to fight war, but its ability to prevent it, to strive to prevent it. The evils of war with its lies, deceit, and brutality is being played out to us today, very much so, by the Russian, the huge Russian army against the small country of Ukraine. And with the result, there is carnage, bloodshed, misery, inflicted upon innocent, innocent women, children, and men. But here today, we gather, mine was remembering chaplains from all walks of life that have supported young soldiers, men and women, in their time of need. But it is our duty, your duty and my duty, as we gather here, never to give up hope, never to give up hope, but to be women and men who strive for peace, who strive for peace, in season and out of season. Otherwise, we have lost the war. That is what our fallen, that is what our return service women and men would wish us to. And as we gather here on Anzac Day, we remember our fallen, and we say to them, you did your duty for country, for community, and for freedom. To honor them is ours, lest we forget. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil will I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head 
you have anointed, my cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever, lest we forget. Thank you, Father Wayne. It's now my pleasure to welcome forward Waitaki Girls High School uh, head girl, uh, Sophie McMillan Sinclair, to give the address today. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sophie, and I'm proud to be here this morning on behalf of Waitaki Girls High School, acknowledging the sacrifice of those who fought for our country, our freedom, our way of life and our people. Anzac Day, our National Day of Remembrance, originally devised to honour those in the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps who served in the Gallipoli campaign. Now commemorating all those from both New Zealand and Australia who served and died in all wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations. I've been asked to share a personal story in which I struggle to make about any past family members. But having gone to Mahino School in my primary years, I built a strong connection with the story of the SS Mahino, the ocean ship, ocean liner and hospital ship, as the school had been given the original bell. In 2017, we travelled over to Fraser Island, Australia, to spend Anzac Day connecting with our local roots, being the SS Mahino. I'll forever be grateful that I had the chance to experience something so important to our soldiers as having been made so aware of this history makes me feel much more connected to the day. The ship belonged to the Union Company of New Zealand, used by the New Zealand Naval Forces during World War I, as His Majesty's Hospital Ship No. 1. It was in 1935 when the SS Mahino was washed ashore by a cyclone on Fraser Island, where the wreck still remains to this day. Fitted with two operating theatres, eight wards, and a medical team consisting of 61 orderlies, five doctors, a matron and her team of nurses, the hospital ship was conducting surgeries and treatments on the wounded. August 1915, the ship arrived at Madras, the naval base of the Gallipoli campaign. It further travelled to Anzac Cove on the Gallipoli Peninsula. Casualties were loaded and cared for over the next three months where they travelled to Malta. The SS Mahino returned to New Zealand on the 1st of January 1915. From here on, it made its way back to Egypt and the UK through the English Channel working on wounded troops. December 1916 came around and six more voyages between New Zealand and the British Isles were complete. I specifically remember learning about nurses Charlotte Lee Gallius and Isabel Clark who I believe some of you may have heard of, either through personal connections or the phenomenal display at Te Papa. They were both Auckland trained nurses who were selected for the first voyage of the ship. Isabel, being a past, past Waitaki Girls student, drowned only three months after they set off from New Zealand on the SS Marquette, a smaller ship she was transferred to that was torpedoed. Charlotte had planned to meet with her brother who was fighting in Gallipoli, but reached Egypt a month after he was killed in action. I can't comprehend the fact that if I was here in 1914, it would be my family in their position. My friends standing in front of me, being sent off to fight and nurse in Gallipoli with unpredictable chances of return. Parts of this history may resonate with you, I can't be sure. But in seeing you all here today, I understand that every single one of us can pick out a purpose. A purpose for why we are drawn to come together today and celebrate those who sacrifice themselves with more bravery, compassion, fear and hope than we could ever imagine. You would think that this annual reminder would be purely a reminder of the past, a reminder of what should only be associated as history. 
But to this moment, the heartache we experience now from losing people to war is continuing to be experienced and will be far past my own lifetime, I'm sure. As smart as us humans are to be able to conduct such huge actions, I find it hard to put into perspective that we also fail to learn from experience and continue to repeat history, which should be the most obvious lesson of all. In saying this, I think it's beautiful that we also have the mind to recognise our men and women by bringing new life to the land. Just over a hundred years ago, the oak trees were planted up on 7th Street alongside the white crosses. My nanny once said to me something along the lines of that she loves the sense is that when everything in Omaru has changed and left, these trees have stood the whole time. I hope that people can see the beauty in this and maybe it is a reminder that what went down many years ago is now not only recognised with a single day, but the pure being of what goes above us today, tomorrow and for many years to come. We will remember them. Thank you very much, Sophie. Some excellent words there. Um, I now welcome forward Adia Craig, one of the trustees from the RSA Trust, to give a message. Thank you to everyone for coming and supporting this very special day in the history of our wars. This day remains significant both as part of our history, remembering those who fought, and it is important for our future to continue to honour the brave men and women who may be standing among us today, who may one day represent our country in war or conflict. The mission of the RSA is to remember and care for all those impacted by service for New Zealand in military operations. Amaru does have an RSA welfare trust and we're part of our community and we continue to respect the ANZAC, ANZAC spirit of courage, commitment, comradeship and compassion. We must never forget the local and national heroes who fought for us. The wreaths laid today at various venues around New Zealand are created with love and respect for those who gave their lives for us to be safe. May we never forget the importance of retaining peace and helping others every day. No matter the consequences or circumstances, no matter how tired or stressed that we are. We shall remember those who have sacrificed their lives for us to live in peace. Thank you very much, Adia, for that. I ask uh, Barry Gable to come forward and for Ray Walker. Uh, Ray is going to be playing the last post. Barry will be giving the ode. Ray will then play Ravelli. After that, there will be, I believe, three firings of the 25 pounder, so do be aware that that is coming. Um, but, uh, Ray, I'll hand to you. Thank you.
they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. I think that's all. <laughs> uh, please be seated. I ask uh, Father Wayne to come forward now to give a benediction. God of sacred mystery, God of life, and God of love. Your son, Jesus Christ, addressed you when he said, Father, may they be one as we are one, with me and you and you and me. Heavenly Father, we have gathered here as one, one in mind, one in heart, and one in affection. May we continue, through your blessings, to always strive for peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our community, peace in our country, and peace in a fallen world. For well, may the Lord bless us all and keep us. May his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may God's tender love walk with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. That concludes our service for today. But thanks once again for coming out, for being here. Just got reminded of something that wasn't on the run sheet, but I was told. Um, we're going to have a haka before we do finish up. So call the haka team forward. I'll just say something real quick. Uh, it's just a mighty prayer. Me no tato, yoda tumurino, ke paka papa, ponamu te moana, e vurahi matu e te ranginu. Aroha atu, aroha mai, tato e a tato katoa.
Thank you very much. Good job. Thank you very much for that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to our veterans. Thank you very much for all you have done. I want to recognise the efforts that all of you have made over the years. We've had over 100 years of Anzac tradition now. During that time, there's been many conflicts and our service personnel have so often gone overseas and served for us. So to all of you, and I include Merchant Navy in that too, because they were very much at the centre of everything there. Thank you very much for all of your service. Also for today, thank you very much to the bands that have played, the Garrison Band and the Pipe Band. That's been appreciated. To you all, thank you for coming. Go in peace. See you next year. Thank you.